Hi everyone. Great to uh, be with you again after this uh, this break, holiday break. I hope you had a good time on holiday. Uh, do type in uh, where you're from uh, in the in the comments box. That helps me to uh, get a sense of uh, who's here, but also so that I know that uh, you can hear me and the and the uh, system is working because you know what it's like with this uh, with this uh, online stuff. Uh, so if you say, hello, I'll know, ah, oh, Keith from Alabama. We know it's reaching Alabama. That's fantastic. Belfast, okay, fantastic. We can imagine little, little line, little points of light. There's one in Alabama, it's Belfast, Berlin, the Netherlands. And then all these, we can hear you and then we can, yes, Tennessee, that's Derbyshire. Fantastic, gradually, we can sense this network going. Staten Island hears you. Oh, it's wonderful. Isn't this wonderful? So, Michigan and Wisconsin, that's great. It's really lovely. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it, this, this whole business, really? Because we lead busy, isolated lives in some ways from community, we, we may be lucky and we may be embedded in community and have a great community of of friends and fellow travelers with us. Or we may be way out somewhere and, and, and not have much of a community physically to connect with. And uh, and this is where the internet comes in. A friend of mine, uh, youth, the, the chap who got the, uh, the, uh, the honorary bardship last year, record producer, um, a wonderful guy. And he was saying he feels the internet is like a dragon. You have to ride the dragon or, you know, or not. And so we're all riding the dragon today and, and connecting up. Hello from Wales, that's great. So let's take these opening moments in our meeting together um, to, to tune in and just to allow ourselves to arrive in the sacred grove. Just sensing ourselves coming together, gathering from east and west, north and south coming to sit around the clearing in the forest with the tall trees around us connected to the earth, the stars above us, and then the good earth beneath us. And we can let out a big sigh and just allow our tensions and concerns just to drop away into the earth and feeling calm and settled here together in this clearing in the forest. And so to, um, to start with, I thought, um, I want you to tell me if I'm, if I'm looking, it's a strange question, but am I looking at you? Because it's quite strange. I have one of these big monitors and I don't quite know where to, to look. My tendency is to look at you there Maybe you could just type in, am I, am I, do I seem to be looking at you or should I be looking at the little camera? Uh, if I look up at the little camera, I feel like I'm looking up, but I'll do that if you want me to. Chris Parker in Australia, tell me, uh, am I looking at you now or is it better, uh, am I looking at you if I kind of look straight ahead? Second one, looking straight ahead. If you look at the little camera, you're looking at us. Right there. <laughs> You're saying I can't tell. Uh, I'll do it again. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to count to five, looking straight ahead. One, two, three, four, five. Is that is that it? Turn left, 120 degrees. Hee <laughs> hee. Somebody's tricking me. Chuck is tricking me. Straight ahead in my Bible. Hey. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, listen. Let's not worry about that. Uh, I I sense you all around me, and of course, when when one's in a grove. We're, we're all around and uh, so maybe I'll just look around and get that feeling of us all together in the circle that's because that's how we talk when we're when we're in the grove I'll sense you all around what I thought uh, I'd like to do is just talk for a few minutes about something very basic which is why we teach druidry why we follow druidry or follow druid training through three groves or grades or levels, bards, ovates, and druids. I mean, it would be quite reasonable to say 
it's a spiritual path. Why are you breaking it into three? Surely we're all seekers on the path. We're all walking towards uh, illumination and development. Why break it into three phases? Well, of course, that's, that's true. And at one level, these three phases we can let go of completely. And you can, in fact, follow the Druid way and not uh, use the concepts of Bard, Ovate and Druid. You can just follow Druidry and uh, follow teachings and, um, and be a Druid in that sense. But the reason why in the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids, we, uh, follow, we, we follow progression from the Bardic to the Ovate to the Druid grade is because it really does seem to answer to three different aspects of ourselves. So there's a way in which the Bard answers to that part of us that wants to be really creative, that wants to make our mark in the world is one way of putting at it, it. But another way of putting at it is just fulfill our potential and somehow radiate and be in the world, not in a passive sense, but in an active sense, in a contributing way, contributing way. But for most of us, there's another side of us that however much we're expressing ourselves creatively or trying to act in the world, there'll be another part of us that will want to voyage in other worlds. The, the shamanic side of us, if you like, the one that wants to see through the veil to the heart of nature, to the heart of reality, to travel in this world and in the other world to gain inspiration and knowledge and healing too. And there'll also be another part of us that simply seeks wisdom, the mystic and the philosopher within us that wants to sit quietly in the forest or at home, being open to the depths, open to the mystery, and having a philosophical understanding of life and questioning life and 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 uh, and seeking to be wiser, seeking to gain wisdom and perhaps illumination too. And so there are, and of course we have all sorts of other desires as well. But these here, here are three, what I would suggest are key desires we have at the core of our being. If we, if we sit down and say, okay, what do you really want? I know you want a new car. I know you want a new girlfriend. But what? or boyfriend, but what do you, what do you, what does your soul want? And then I think we start to get to these core desires or aspirations for wisdom, understanding, for a deep connection with nature, for healing, the ovate level, and for a sense of being co-creative of, of creating in the world, of giving to the world. And of course, so that's why we, we, we follow, that's why we do this in the training. That's why we, uh, that's why we follow this sequence. I see that I'm pixelated again. I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't know why that's, because we normally have quite a good internet connection, but it does look rather interesting, doesn't it? As the face changes and all the rest of it. So, um, I guess the trick is just to enjoy it. Um, so peace, peace says Sammy and, and Rebecca, we want peace as well. And I think uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps that's the aspiration of, of the Druid, that deep peace, uh, which is, and of course the, the, the Druids are traditionally associated with, with being peacemakers, which is a lovely aspect to Druidry. From Iceland, oh, there's someone in Iceland. How lovely! Uh, Stephanie and I were there uh, earlier uh, last year, and uh, what a wonderful country that is! And Sammy also says to live in my authenticity. Yeah, so we can we could make a maybe a, a flower, sort of petals of different aspirations we have to be to live in peace, to be authentic, to be wise, to be creative, and so on. And so. 
but we start how come we start with with the bardic side well when when you when you look at it let's just spend a little while with that today and then maybe next week we can look at the ovate or the druid side but to focus in on why we start with the bardic tradition the emphasis on story is not unique to druidry you find it in every spiritual tradition in the, the in judaism and particularly in hasidic judaism you have the the magid who is the storyteller in west africa you have the griots um you have the you know famous sufi tales hindu tales buddhist tales and so on uh every culture and every spirituality has its um has its spiritual stories and its and its love of story and its use of story to convey spiritual teachings and so and so um the so so druidry isn't unique in this but i perhaps a particularity of druidry as as it's taught today is the way we focus in on storytelling uh as the first level of um, training. And one of the reasons I think you can explain that is that the story is the way in. If you think about when you meet somebody, imagine, imagine now you're sitting in a, in a cafe somewhere and a friend has told you that uh, you know, you're know you gonna meet somebody who they think you'll get on with. I've got a friend who's kind of interesting and they'll, they'll drop by. And a very ordinary uh, looking person, nothing special about them, comes and sits down. Maybe it's awkward to begin with. You say hi and I say, but then you ask them a question about themselves. You ask them essentially to tell their story. Like how, how, how come you know, you're here? And imagine now they start to tell the story of their lives. And this is one of the reasons I became so interested in psychotherapy is what I found was people's stories are so amazing. The most apparently ordinary, the most apparently boring, if you wanted to be judgmental, uh, apparently boring person. If you start to kind of just ask them a few key questions, they, they start to become interesting. It's the way into relationship. And uh, it's a great it's a great clue. I remember explaining this to my grandson uh, uh, who's, who lives in New Zealand, and uh, and uh, and I said, look, let's I'll, I'll I'll show you how it works. It's it's such a it's such a lovely thing to do. And and we were in the car. We got back to the house, and there was a new guy in the gardener. He was a friend of of the or an assistant to the gardener who was working there. And I went up to him with my grandson. I said, hi, I'm, I'm Philip, uh, you know, and he said, hi, it's, I'm John. And, and then I just asked him a few questions like, oh, it's great to see you here. Have you been gardening a long time? How did you get into gardening? When did you first start? And, you know, and, and gradually this story opened out. And what's lovely is it doesn't take uh, a long time to do this. Just ask a few questions, not in an intrusive way, but in a in a loving way, in an, a compassionate way, in, a, in an interested way, and uh, that's the way in. So I think the way in to relationship with people is through story, and the way into a, the spiritual life is through story too. You know the way we might hear about Buddhism or uh, Druidism or, or Jainism or Hinduism, and so when we hear the stories, some of them will resonate with us. The, the imagery, the turn of phrase, the pictures that are built will either resonate for us or they won't. And, um, and, and that, uh, that is a way in which we start to build a relationship. And you know how, let's take another example. You know how you might go, you might go sightseeing and you go to a stately home or a uh, temple or church and there's somebody there's a friend with you or there's a guide there who starts to tell you the story so you're looking at this this building and maybe it's not doesn't appear that interesting you 
sitting there, they signed the armistice or, you know, Mussolini did this or the, the emperor so-and-so did that or the Buddha, the Buddha sat here under this tree or whatever, whatever it is. As soon as you tell the story, this kind of dull house, perhaps, or place, starts to become interesting. It, it immediately populates it with, with meaning. And so we're taking this step towards meaning and towards depth. And then Keith Ferguson is saying, whenever I'm out in public, I feel like I'm in a library with all the various stores around me, stories around me. And that's so true, isn't it? There's a, there's a lovely um, tradition that came out of 19th century France of the boulevardier or the flaneur. And the, the idea was that you strolled the boulevards of Paris and just hung out in cafes and you essentially did people watching. That's what people watching is. You sit there and you and you see somebody walking past and you think, I wonder what they do. I wonder what's happening in their life. And you allow yourself to imagine the stories and so on. And maybe a story unfolds in front of you because they sit down at the next table in the cafe and start to talk to a friend. And so, but here's here, so I think I think we all know why story is is interesting and why it's a good way in. Um, but let's look at a, a, another level of this, which is the way we are embedded in given stories and chosen stories. Okay, so there's the story of your life, and then there's the story and you uh, there's the story of your family your ancestry where you've come from uh your country your maybe your tribe your ethnicity your your nationality whatever whatever you identify with and then the story of the world and these if you like are, are stories that are given to you all those stories now the tricky thing is we may not like them we may not like our family story we may may not like uh the story of our nation or the story of the world the way the world's going for instance the direction of the world and of course that's when we get sadness tension conflict and difficulty but luckily in addition to given stories there are chosen stories. So what do I mean by that? A chosen story is the stories that you choose to participate in, the relationships that you have, the groups you join. So for instance, if you're a member of this order or you're interested in Druidry, you, you, this is a chosen story. You don't have to participate in this. It's completely voluntary. Any, any world of story and connection and relationship is a chosen story. And the reality is our life is, is made up of a kind of wove of given stories and chosen stories. And some of the given stories may be dark. Some of the given stories you may not find comfortable. But it seems to be that if you ignore them or are in denial about them or don't look at them, they're still there. So better by far to try to come to terms with them, to be aware of them, and to do perhaps what, uh, you know, the Eastern religions of uh, the Dharmic traditions of Buddhism and Jainism and Hinduism are rather good at, is where they suggest this attitude of uh, no aversion, no attachment. So you just practice this equanimity, this peaceful gazing upon the story you've been given, <clears throat> the story of your life, the story around you and so on, with no aversion, no attachment, but fully engaged. That's the trick, I think. The trouble with focusing on no aversion, no attachment on its own can be a kind of numbing detachment where you're not really engaged and you're kind of emotionally separated from the stories that are around you. And I think Druidry is a spirituality that is encouraging engagement. But you can be, you can be <clears throat> not attached, not averse, engaged, but not sucked into the drama of it. 
because deep inside you know that your spirit and your soul is connected to a beautiful story an unfolding story of your soul and i see pat is saying here i'm not too fond of my given story but the druidic idea of having ancestors of place and ancestors of spirits and ideas freed me up to choose stories that were more helpful to me more helpful and hopeful exactly so it's like it seems there's maybe a sort of two-stage process or something of looking at the stories around us of our family of our given stories we look at the world we look at the world of politics and current affairs of the environment and ecology and so on and say hey i don't really like this story this is pretty tough but this is where i find myself and i also in addition to these stories live in a world of chosen stories and i can choose to fashion that so i become a storyteller a story creator too we are the new ancestors as nicole says we 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 are actually because the life we lead becomes the story for the ancestors if you like so it's in the end we move from a sense of being disempowered to being empowered and uh that's i think uh why we why we focus on uh the bardic work as the first step in uh empowering ourselves that's why in the training of the order we begin with the bardic work and you know at one level that work with our own story and with integrating it with the stories around us uh, goes on all our lives but the, but but also it's a chunk of work that can be done and then moved on from so that's what i'd suggest if i've seen some comments saying how can i work with my stories and all the rest of it well you know i would take heart in in the fact that it is a work that can be done and then you can move on from you know it's working with your given stories that perhaps are difficult for you 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 don't have to be trapped by them but you do have to do some work i i'd suggest at least that's the stance of psychotherapy and i would suggest a sort of um uh, a, 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 a spiritual path too and so perhaps that's that's probably enough i'm trying to keep these to 20 minutes because there's only so much we can uh we can contain but i just want to share a little bit of my story with you just because i'm excited about it um this arrived in the post today and um this is something that i uh i was working on last year and it's finally arrived uh, let's see if you can see it it's called the opera tarot it's a tarot deck uh that i've that i've worked on uh with a wonderful artist called linda sutton and you know i have a special interest in the opera stephanie worked in the opera for 25 years as a scenic artist so we live just down the road from a world-class opera house Kleinborn. and so the world of opera and um what opera can do is is is, is very dear to me and uh linda visited us about a year or so ago and she had painted an entire tarot deck based on scenes from the opera and she asked me if i'd write the book to go with it and here it is it's a beautiful it's it's a going to be it's a well it is a limited edition of just uh uh where are we going uh ooh, this is an inside box on the on the outer box if you, i don't know if you can see inside there the inside of the box has got all the the symbols of the uh the um the suits and uh then it's got an inner box that it comes comes in and it's got pink gold it's 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 maybe pink gold so it's a limited edition and then it's printed in um the book is in um english and italian it's coming out so two two little books in english and italian and uh in addition to the books you have the cards uh which uh which have this beautiful gold gold pink gold uh background the backs are lovely and then uh all sorts of scenes from the opera which i'll uh i'll put up on on uh you know on my blog and website and all the rest of it these are this is an advanced copy um so so it's not out yet it's going to be out i think at imolk uh 
So in a few weeks time and I'll announce it then. But but I just had this lovely experience of opening. I love opening post. Nice juicy post, big pad of bags and so on. And uh, there was a nice box that came and it came. So I wanted to share that uh, excitement with you. So um, so let's uh, let's finish now. But it's been so great to uh, Maria Lyon says, do we need to sing? Yes, let's start singing in these uh, tea, tea breaks, tea, tea times. That would be lovely. Um, and uh, so all sorts of questions, which operas and so on. I'll, I'll do some posts on it on my, on my blog because uh, there's, because there's, uh, there's <laughs> I've got to start re stop reading your comments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to read your comments. So I'll be online. For, for, for a little while and uh, and I'll uh, read your comments and try and post some back and lots and lots of love to you uh, I hope uh, this new year brings you great joy great uh, peace and happiness and uh, the fulfillment of creative projects and good health and blessings to you and see you uh, next Monday at the same time okay bye <laughs>